Welcome to the NCLEX Review, where I help you review all the things you need to know for NCLEX. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com. Okay, let's review the immune system. The first thing we're going to talk about is HIV. Our nursing interventions for this are standard precautions. HIV is only spread when non-intact skin is in contact with patients' blood, breast milk, semen, or vaginal secretions. We want to protect these patients from infection and always using aseptic technique for all procedures. HIV testing, so we're looking at CD4 and T cell count, which is normally between 500 and 1600. In HIV, it will drop below 500 and in some cases lower than 200. We may do a viral culture of the patient's blood looking at viral load testing, P24 antigen assay. We have an oral testing for HIV where a device is placed against the gums and a home test. Then we have AIDS. So this is a viral disease due to HIV, high risk for infection and malignancy, an incubation period of up to 10 years. Signs and symptoms include low white blood cells, platelets, CD4, along with high CD8, IgG, and IgA. We can see weakness, fever, weight loss, which is called a wasting syndrome, leukopenia, night sweats, infections, neoplasms such as Carposi's sarcoma occur in immunocompromised individuals. It's a slow-growing tumor. And they can also have the presence of fungal, viral, and bacterial infections. Our high risk such as IV drug users, patients receiving blood products, healthcare workers, and babies born to infected moms. Our nursing interventions are oxygen as needed, maintain fluid and electrolyte imbalance, monitor for infections, using standard precaution and meticulous skin care. Let's talk about anaphylaxis. So this is an immediate hypersensitivity reaction with release of histamine. We'll see angioedema, dizziness, paresthesia, pruritus, uticaria, narrowing of the airway, wheezing, strider, shortness of breath, respiratory arrest, hypotension, tachycardia, cardiac arrest, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. Nursing interventions always are ABCs. So first is making sure there's a patent airway. They can have that angioedema, which can close up the airway. We may need to give them supplemental oxygen. They may need IV normal saline infusion. And we want to be giving them the antidotes, whether it's Benadryl or epinephrine. Disease. So this is an infection due to Borrelia bugadoferi from a tick bite. So there are three stages. The first stage, we're going to see symptoms that occur several days to months following a bite. A ring-shaped rash may occur anywhere on the body. This is key. They give you something that's talking about a ring-shaped rash. You want to be thinking Lyme disease. They have flu-like symptoms such as headache, stiff neck, muscle ache, and fatigue. The second stage occurs several weeks following the bite. There'll be joint pain, neurological complications, and cardiac complications can occur. And the third stage, large joints become involved and arthritis progresses. Our nursing interventions are to remove the tick, complete a blood test for diagnoses four to six weeks after the bite for reliability, administer antibiotics, teach patients to avoid woody areas, teach them to wear long sleeve tops and pants when outside, and use tick repellent. So then we have different types of immunoglobulins. So we have immunoglobulin A. This is, gives us viral protection. We have immunoglobulin D, which has an unknown function. Immunoglobulin E is our allergy and parasitic infestation protection. IgG is our secondary antibody protection. And IgM is our primary antibody protection. So now let's talk about a couple autoimmune diseases. We've talked about some other ones in their specific systems that they're related to, but we're going to talk about systemic lupus. This is a chronic progressive systemic inflammation which causes the organs to fail. The cause is unknown, but it's thought to be genetic. Symptoms are a mylar rash on the face. This is also called a butterfly rash. This is a key point. If you see this in a question, the answer is most likely going to be lupus. 
dry rash on the upper body, fever, weakness, weight loss, photosensitivity, joint pain, red palms, anemia. They'll have a positive ANA blood test and an elevated ESR and C-reactive protein. So our nursing interventions is we want to monitor for skin integrity, mild soap on the skin, frequent oil, oral care, high vitamin and iron diet, conserve energy and avoid direct sunlight, topical corticosteroids, and monitor BUN and creatinine levels to watch for renal impairment because they do have that organ failure. Scleroedema, so this is similar to lupus. It causes inflammation, fibrosis, and sclerosis of connective tissue, and there is no cure. Patients will have pain, stiff muscles, pitting edema, tight, shiny, thick, and hard skin, dysphagia, and contractures. For nursing interventions, we want to encourage activity as tolerated, maintain constant room temperature, provide small meals, eliminate spicy foods, caffeine, and alcohol. And we want to remember that renal crisis is a life-threatening complication and causes hypertension due to narrowing of the blood vessels going to the kidney. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.